Are you serious, Max? I asked, my voice trembling with a mix of disbelief and hurt. The clinking of silverware and the murmur of other diners faded into the background as I stared at my brother across the candlelit table. Lucy, please. Max began, but Sarah cut him off. She's right, Max. It's not like she has a degree or anything, Sarah said, her tone dismissive. She took a sip of her wine, her eyes not meeting mine. I felt a sharp pang in my chest. I may not have a degree, but I've worked hard to be where I am, I said, trying to keep my voice steady. Sarah raised an eyebrow. Writing novels? That's hardly a real job. Max's hand tightened around his fork. Sarah, that's enough, he said, his voice low and warning. The tension between us was palpable. I glanced around the restaurant, feeling the eyes of the other patrons on us. I wished I could disappear. Let's not cause a scene, I said quietly, looking down at my plate. I just wanted to meet the woman my brother is going to marry. Sarah's eyes flickered with something I couldn't quite place. Pity, maybe. I'm sorry if I offended you, Lucy, she said, though her tone suggested she wasn't sorry at all. Max reached across the table and took my hand. You belong here, Lucy. Don't let anyone make you feel otherwise. I squeezed his hand, grateful for his support. But the damage was done. The evening continued in awkward silence, the joy of the occasion overshadowed by the sting of Sarah's words. As we left the restaurant, Max walked me to my car. I'm sorry about tonight, he said, his face etched with worry. It's not your fault. I replied, forcing a smile. I just hope she realizes how much you mean to me. She will, he assured me. Just give her time. I nodded, though doubt lingered in my mind. Good night, Max. Good night, Lucy. I drove home in silence, the city lights blurring past me. My thoughts were a whirlwind of emotions. Anger, sadness, and a deep sense of betrayal. How could someone who claimed to love my brother be so dismissive of me? The next morning, my phone buzzed with a message from Max, Mom and Dad would be proud of you, it read. His words brought a small comfort, but they couldn't erase the hurt from the night before. Later that day, I received a call from an unknown number. Hello. I answered, my voice wary. Is this Lucy Barnes? A cold, unfamiliar voice asked. Yes, who's this? This is Beth Turner, Sarah's mother. I'd like to speak with you about the wedding. I felt a chill run down my spine. What about it? I think it would be best if you didn't attend, she said bluntly. What? Why? I asked, my heart pounding. Let's be honest, Lucy. You're not exactly the type of person we want associated with our family, she continued, her tone dripping with condescension. It's nothing personal, but we have an image to maintain. I was speechless. I'm Max's sister. How can you ask me to stay away from his wedding? I'm sure you understand, she said, not waiting for my response before hanging up. I stood there, the phone still pressed to my ear, feeling a mix of shock and fury. How could they treat me like this? I had always been there for Max, and now I was being cast aside like I didn't matter. That evening, I met Max at our favorite coffee shop. Beth called me today. I said, my voice trembling with anger. Max's face darkened. What did she say? She asked me not to attend the wedding. I replied, struggling to keep my composure. What? Max's eyes widened in disbelief. She has no right. She said I'm not the type of person they want associated with their family. I interrupted, my voice breaking. Max reached across the table and took my hand. You're my family, Lucy. You're coming to the wedding and that's final. I looked into his eyes, seeing the determination there. Thank you, Max. We're in this together, he said firmly. No one can come between us. As I left the coffee shop, I felt a renewed sense of strength. No matter what challenges lay ahead, I knew Max and I would face them together. And I was determined to prove to everyone that I belonged. I was still reeling from Beth's call when I decided to confront Sarah directly. I couldn't let this go without at least trying to understand why they were so adamant about excluding me. I called her and arranged to meet at a small cafe near her office. I arrived early, my mind racing with all the things I wanted to say. Sarah walked in, 
her demeanor as composed as ever. She spotted me and approached the table, her expression unreadable. Lucy, she greeted curtly as she sat down. Sarah, I need to understand why your mother is so set on excluding me from the wedding, I said, trying to keep my voice calm. Sarah sighed, looking away for a moment before meeting my eyes. It's not just about you, Lucy. My parents have certain expectations. They want everything to be perfect. And you think excluding Max's only sister will make everything perfect? I asked, incredulous. It's not personal, she insisted. It's just they have a certain image in mind. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. So, because I don't fit their image, I don't belong? Sarah hesitated. Look, I know this is hard for you to understand, but my parents are very particular. They're used to a certain way of life. I shook my head, feeling a mix of anger and sadness. Max and I have been through so much together. We've always supported each other. I can't believe you'd let your parents come between us like this. Sarah's eyes softened slightly. I love Max, Lucy. I really do. But my parents, they're not easy to deal with. Neither am I, I said firmly. And I'm not going to let them push me out of my brother's life. Sarah looked taken aback by my resolve. I'll talk to them, she said finally. But I can't make any promises. Just do what's right, I replied, standing up to leave. For Max's sake. As I walked out of the cafe, I felt a surge of determination. I wasn't going to let anyone dictate my place in my brother's life. Not even his fiancé's parents. A few days later, Max called me. Lucy, we need to talk, he said, his voice serious. Is everything okay? I asked, worry creeping into my voice. Just come over, he replied. When I arrived at Max's apartment, he looked more stressed than I'd ever seen him. What's going on? I asked, my heart pounding. Sarah talked to her parents, he began. They're still insisting that you shouldn't come to the wedding. I felt a lump form in my throat. Max, I. But I'm not going to let that happen, he interrupted, his eyes fierce. You're my sister, and you're going to be there. I felt a surge of gratitude for my brother's unwavering support. Thank you, Max. I just don't understand why they're so against me. It's their loss, he said firmly. You're coming to the wedding, and that's final. The day of the wedding arrived, and I felt a mix of nerves and determination as I got ready. I knew it wouldn't be easy, but I was determined to stand by my brother's side. As I arrived at the venue, I could feel the eyes of the Turner family on me. Beth's icy stare was particularly hard to ignore. I took a deep breath and held my head high, refusing to let them see how much their disdain affected me. The ceremony was beautiful, but the tension was palpable. As we moved to the reception, I could hear whispers and see the judgmental glances from Sarah's family and their friends. During the speeches, Beth took the microphone. I'd like to thank everyone for being here today, she began, her eyes scanning the room. It's a joy to see so many wonderful people gathered to celebrate this union. I felt a sinking feeling in my stomach as she continued. However, I must say, it's unfortunate that some people don't understand the importance of maintaining certain standards. I could feel the blood drain from my face. She was doing this here in front of everyone. Max's face turned red with anger, and I could see him clenching his fists. Beth, that's enough, Max said, his voice shaking with fury. Beth ignored him. We all want what's best for our children, and sometimes that means making difficult decisions about who we allow into our lives. I couldn't take it anymore. I stood up, my heart pounding. I'm not going to let you humiliate me like this, I said, my voice trembling but loud enough for everyone to hear. The room fell silent. Beth looked at me with a mixture of surprise and disdain. This is not the time, Lucy, she said coldly. No, this is exactly the time, I replied, my voice gaining strength. I've been nothing but supportive of Max and Sarah, and I won't let you or anyone else make me feel like I don't belong. Max stood up beside me. Lucy's right. She's my sister, and she's part of this family, whether you like it or not. Sarah's face was pale, and I could see the conflict in her eyes. Max, please, she whispered. No, Sarah, 
Max said firmly. This has gone on long enough. The tension in the room was unbearable, but I felt a sense of relief. No matter what happened next, I knew I had my brother's support. And that was all I needed. The aftermath of the confrontation at the wedding reception lingered like a dark cloud. Max and I left the venue together. Our heads held high, but the tension between us and the Turner family was palpable. We spent the next few days in a state of uneasy calm, waiting for the fallout. One evening, as I was working on my latest manuscript, my phone buzzed with an incoming call from Max, Lucy, can you come over? We need to talk, he said, his voice strained. Sure, I'll be there in 15 minutes, I replied, sensing the urgency in his tone. When I arrived at Max's apartment, I found him pacing back and forth, a deep frown etched on his face. What's going on? I asked, closing the door behind me. It's Sarah, he said, running a hand through his hair. She's been distant since the wedding. We had a huge fight last night. She's staying at her parents' house. I felt a pang of guilt. Max, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean for things to get this bad. It's not your fault, Lucy, he said, stopping to look at me. This has been building up for a while. Beth and David have been putting pressure on her, and she's caught in the middle. I sat down on the couch trying to process everything. What are you going to do? I don't know, he admitted sitting next to me. I love Sarah, but I can't let her family treat you like this. It's tearing us apart. We sat in silence for a moment, the weight of the situation pressing down on us. Finally, I spoke up. Maybe I should talk to Sarah. Try to make her understand how important you are to me. Max looked at me, his eyes filled with gratitude. Would you do that? Of course, I said, squeezing his hand. We're family. We stick together. The next day, I called Sarah and asked to meet her at a park near her parents' house. She agreed, though her voice was hesitant. When I arrived, she was already there, sitting on a bench and staring at the ground. Sarah, I said, sitting down next to her. We need to talk. She looked up at me, her eyes red from crying. I know, Lucy. I'm sorry for everything that happened at the wedding. My parents, they're difficult. I understand, I said gently. But this isn't just about them. It's about you and Max. He loves you, and he's willing to fight for you. But he can't do it alone. She nodded, wiping away a tear. I love him too, but my parents, they've always had such high expectations. They want everything to be perfect. Perfection is an illusion, I said softly. What matters is the love and support you give each other. Max and I have always been there for each other, and I know he wants to be there for you too. Sarah took a deep breath her resolve hardening. You're right, Lucy. I need to stand up to my parents, for Max and for myself. I smiled, feeling a sense of hope. We'll get through this together. As we parted ways, I felt a renewed sense of determination. But the peace was short-lived. That evening, Max called me again, his voice filled with urgency. Lucy, you need to come over. Now. I rushed to his apartment, my heart pounding. When I arrived, I found him sitting at the kitchen table, a letter in his hands. What's going on? I asked, sitting down across from him. It's from David Turner, he said, his voice shaking with anger. He's threatening to ruin my career if I don't break off the engagement with Sarah. I felt a surge of rage. He can't do that. This is blackmail. Max nodded, his face pale. I know, but he's a powerful man. He has connections. He could make my life very difficult. I took a deep breath, trying to calm my racing thoughts. We can't let him win, Max. We need to fight back. But how? He asked, desperation in his eyes. We'll figure it out, I said firmly. We'll find a way to stand up to him. Together. As we sat there, plotting our next move, I knew we were in for a tough battle. But with Max by my side, I was ready to face whatever came our way. The stakes were higher than ever, and the fight for our family's honor had only just begun. The letter from David Turner was a ticking time bomb. Max and I sat in his living room, the weight of the threat hanging over us like a dark cloud. We need to be smart about this, I said, pacing the room. 
We can't let him bully us into submission. Max nodded, but I could see the worry etched on his face. He's got a lot of power, Lucy. If he wants to ruin me, he can. Then we need to find a way to protect you, I replied, determination hardening my resolve. We need leverage. The next morning, I woke up with a plan forming in my mind. I spent the day researching David Turner, digging into his business dealings and connections. As the hours ticked by, I uncovered a thread of questionable activities that could be the key to our defense. That evening, I called Max. I think I've found something, I said, excitement and nerves mingling in my voice. David's company has been involved in some shady deals. If we can expose this, it might be enough to make him back off. Max listened intently as I explained what I'd found. This is risky, Lucy, he said, his voice tinged with concern. If we go after him and fail, it could make things worse. I know, I admitted, but we can't just sit back and let him destroy your career. We have to fight back. Max sighed, running a hand through his hair. All right, let's do this. We spent the next few days gathering evidence, carefully compiling everything we needed to confront David. The tension was palpable, but our determination kept us going. Finally, we were ready to make our move. We arranged to meet David at a neutral location, a quiet, upscale restaurant where we knew we wouldn't be interrupted. As we waited for him to arrive, I could feel my heart pounding in my chest. David walked in, his presence commanding the room. He approached our table with a smug smile. Max Lucy, he greeted, his tone dripping with condescension. What's this about? We need to talk, Max said, his voice steady despite the tension. David sat down, leaning back in his chair. Go on. I took a deep breath and laid out the evidence we'd gathered. We know about your company's illegal activities, David. If you don't back off, we'll go public with this. David's eyes narrowed, his smug expression faltering. You're bluffing. Try us, I challenged, meeting his gaze head-on. We have everything we need to bring you down. For a moment, the tension was unbearable. Then, David's expression shifted to one of cold fury. You think you can threaten me? You have no idea who you're dealing with. We know exactly who we're dealing with, Max said, his voice filled with quiet determination. And we're not afraid of you. David stood up abruptly, his chair scraping against the floor. You'll regret this, he hissed before storming out of the restaurant. As he left, I felt a mixture of relief and apprehension. We'd made our stand, but the battle was far from over. Max and I exchanged a glance, knowing that we'd just crossed a line that couldn't be uncrossed. The next few days were a whirlwind of anxiety and anticipation. We waited for David's next move, knowing that he wouldn't back down easily. Then one evening Max received a call from his boss. They're launching an internal investigation, he said, his voice shaking. David's pulling strings to get me fired. I felt a surge of anger. We need to go public with our evidence. It's the only way to stop him. Max hesitated. Are you sure? This could get ugly. It's already ugly, I replied firmly. We can't let him win. We spent the night preparing our case, contacting journalists and making sure our evidence was airtight. The next morning we went public with the information, exposing David's illegal activities to the world. The fallout was immediate. News outlets picked up the story, and the scandal quickly spread. David's reputation took a massive hit, and the pressure on him intensified. But the fight was far from over. One evening, as Max and I were going over the latest developments, my phone buzzed with a message from Sarah. We need to talk, it read. I felt a knot form in my stomach. Sarah wants to meet. I told Max, what should I do? Go, he said, his eyes filled with concern. See what she has to say. I agreed, my heart heavy with uncertainty. As I drove to meet Sarah, I couldn't shake the feeling that everything was about to change. When I arrived, she was waiting for me, her expression filled with a mix of sadness and determination. Lucy, she began, her voice trembling. I've made a decision. I braced myself, knowing that whatever she was about to say would have a profound impact on all of us. 
I sat across from Sarah in the dimly lit cafe, the air thick with tension. Her eyes were red-rimmed, and I could see the toll this whole ordeal had taken on her. She took a deep breath before speaking, her voice barely above a whisper. Lucy, I can't do this anymore, she said, her eyes welling up with tears. I love Max, but my family, they won't stop. I felt a surge of anger and frustration. Sarah, you can't let them control your life. Max loves you, and he's willing to fight for you. But you have to be willing to fight too. She shook her head, tears streaming down her face. You don't understand. My father, he's relentless. He'll destroy Max's career, and he'll make sure I pay for defying him. Then we have to find another way. I insisted, my voice filled with determination. We can't let David win. Sarah looked at me, her eyes filled with a mixture of hope and despair. What can we do? He's too powerful. We'll figure it out, I said firmly. But you need to stand by Max. He needs you now more than ever. She nodded slowly, wiping away her tears. I'll try, Lucy. I promise I'll try. As I left the cafe, I couldn't shake the feeling that we were running out of time. David's threats were growing more intense, and I knew we needed to act fast. I called Max and told him about my conversation with Sarah. I'm glad she's willing to try, Max said, his voice heavy with exhaustion. But we need to be prepared for whatever David throws at us next. The next day, the situation took a turn for the worse. Max received a call from his boss, informing him that he was being placed on administrative leave pending an investigation into his conduct. It was clear that David was pulling every string he could to ruin Max's career. This is it, Lucy, Max said, his voice shaking with anger. He's going to destroy me. No, he's not, I replied, my resolve hardening. We need to go public with everything we have. We need to expose him for who he really is. Max hesitated. Are you sure? This could get ugly. It's already ugly, I said firmly. We can't let him win. We spent the next few days preparing our case, contacting journalists and making sure our evidence was airtight. The tension was palpable, but our determination kept us going. Finally, we were ready to make our move. We held a press conference, presenting our evidence to the media. The room was packed with reporters, their cameras flashing as we laid out the details of David's illegal activities. The scandal quickly spread, and the pressure on David intensified. As the news broke, I received a call from Sarah. Lucy, my father is furious, she said, her voice trembling. He's threatening to disown me if I don't break off the engagement with Max. My heart sank. Sarah, you can't let him control you. You have to stand up to him. I know, she said, her voice filled with determination. I'm going to talk to him. I need to make him understand that I won't be bullied anymore. Later that evening, I received another call from Max. Sarah confronted her father, he said, his voice filled with a mix of hope and worry. She told him that she's standing by me, no matter what. That's great news, I said, feeling a surge of relief. But what did David say? He's furious, Max replied. But Sarah said she's willing to walk away from her family if that's what it takes. I felt a sense of pride for Sarah's bravery. We'll get through this, Max, together. As the days passed, the fallout from the scandal continued to grow. David's reputation was in tatters, and the pressure on him was mounting. But he wasn't going down without a fight. One evening, as Max and I were going over the latest developments, my phone buzzed with a message from an unknown number. Meet me at the park. We need to talk. It read. I showed the message to Max, feeling a knot of apprehension in my stomach. What do you think? He frowned. It could be a trap, but it could also be important. I'll go, I said, my determination outweighing my fear. We need to know what we're up against. As I arrived at the park, I spotted a figure standing by the fountain. It was Beth Turner. She looked anxious her eyes darting around nervously. Beth, I said, approaching her cautiously. Why did you want to meet? She took a deep breath, her voice trembling. Lucy, I need your help. David is out of control. He's planning something big, 
something that could ruin all of us. My heart raced as I listened to her. What do you mean? He's going to take drastic measures to silence you and Max, she said, her eyes filled with fear. You have to stop him before it's too late. I felt a surge of urgency. What can we do? Beth looked at me, her expression desperate. You need to find proof of his plans. It's the only way to stop him. As I left the park, my mind was racing. The stakes had never been higher, and I knew we were running out of time. But with Beth's warning, we had a chance to stop David once and for all. The fight was far from over, but I was more determined than ever to protect my family. The weight of Beth's warning pressed heavily on my mind as I drove back to Max's apartment. I knew we were running out of time, and we needed to act fast. When I arrived, Max was pacing the living room, his anxiety palpable. Max, we need to talk, I said, closing the door behind me. He looked up, his eyes filled with worry. What's going on? I took a deep breath and recounted my meeting with Beth. David is planning something big, something that could ruin all of us. We need to find proof of his plans and stop him. Max's face hardened with determination. We can't let him win. What do we do? We need to dig deeper, find out what he's planning, I said, my mind racing. We need access to his files, his emails, anything that can give us a clue. Max nodded. I know someone who might be able to help. An old friend from college who's a cybersecurity expert. He owes me a favor. Call him, I urged. We don't have much time. Max made the call, and within an hour his friend Alex arrived at the apartment. He was a wiry man with sharp eyes and a quick mind. All right, what are we dealing with? He asked, setting up his laptop on the kitchen table. We need to access David Turner's files and emails, Max explained. He's planning something that could destroy us, and we need proof to stop him. Alex nodded, his fingers flying over the keyboard. Give me a few minutes. As Alex worked, Max and I sat in tense silence, the gravity of the situation weighing heavily on us. Finally, Alex looked up, a triumphant smile on his face. Got it. I've hacked into his email server. Let's see what we can find. We crowded around the laptop, scanning through the emails. It didn't take long to find what we were looking for. David had been corresponding with a shady private investigator, planning to fabricate evidence that would frame Max for embezzlement and fraud. This is it, I said, my heart pounding. This is the proof we need. Max's face was pale with anger. He's willing to destroy my life to get what he wants. We need to take this to the authorities. We need to be careful, Alex warned. David has a lot of connections. We need to make sure we have enough evidence to bring him down for good. We spent the next few hours gathering everything we could find, compiling a comprehensive dossier on David's illegal activities. As dawn broke, we knew we had enough to make our move. Max and I went to the police, presenting our evidence to a detective who specialized in white-collar crime. He listened intently, his expression growing graver with each passing minute. This is serious, he said finally. We'll need to launch a full investigation. But I can't guarantee immediate action. David Turner is a powerful man. We understand, Max said, his voice filled with determination. But we can't let him get away with this. The detective nodded. We'll do everything we can, but be prepared for a fight. As we left the police station, I felt a mixture of relief and apprehension. We'd taken a major step, but the battle was far from over. We returned to Max's apartment, exhausted but resolute. Later that evening, Sarah called. Lucy, I confronted my father, she said, her voice trembling. He's furious, but I told him I'm standing by Max no matter what. I felt a surge of pride for Sarah's bravery. We've taken the evidence to the police. They're launching an investigation. That's good news, she said, relief evident in her voice. But my father won't go down without a fight. We know. I replied. But we're ready for him. As the days passed, the investigation into David's activities gained momentum. The media picked up the story, and the pressure on him intensified. But David wasn't backing down. He launched a counterattack, using his connections to discredit Max and me, 
spreading lies and misinformation. One evening, as Max and I were reviewing the latest developments, my phone buzzed with a message from an unknown number. This isn't over. You'll regret crossing me. It read. I showed the message to Max, my heart pounding. He's not giving up. We can't either, Max said, his eyes filled with determination. We're in this together. But the pressure was taking its toll. Max's job was hanging by a thread, and the constant stress was wearing us down. I knew we were reaching a breaking point, and something had to give. One night, as I sat alone in my apartment, I received a call from Alex. Lucy, I found something, he said, his voice urgent. David's planning to flee the country. He's booked a flight for tomorrow morning. My heart raced. We need to stop him. We need to act fast, Alex said. I'll meet you at the airport. I called Max and told him the news. We have to go now, I said, my voice filled with urgency. This is our last chance. As we raced to the airport, I couldn't shake the feeling that everything was at stake. We were about to face our greatest challenge yet, and I knew we had to be prepared for anything. The fight for our family's honor had reached its climax, and there was no turning back. The drive to the airport felt like an eternity. Max and I didn't exchange many words, but the tension was palpable. We knew that everything was riding on this moment. If David managed to flee the country, all our efforts would be for nothing. We arrived at the airport and met Alex near the entrance. He's booked on a flight to Zurich, Alex said, his voice urgent. We need to get to him before he boards. We rushed through the bustling terminal, weaving through crowds of travelers. My heart pounded in my chest as we approached the security checkpoint. I scanned the area, searching for any sign of David. There he is, Max whispered, pointing toward a man in a dark suit standing near the gate. It was David, and he looked as calm and composed as ever. We approached him cautiously, and as he turned to see us, his expression shifted from surprise to cold fury. What are you doing here? He spat, his eyes narrowing. We're here to stop you, I said, my voice steady despite the fear gnawing at me. You're not going to get away with this, David sneered. You think you can stop me? You have no idea who you're dealing with. Actually, we do. Max said, stepping forward. We've exposed your illegal activities. The authorities are already investigating you. David's face contorted with rage. You've made a grave mistake. You'll regret this. Before he could react, airport security approached us, alerted by the commotion. Is there a problem here? One of the officers asked, eyeing David suspiciously. Yes, I said quickly. This man is attempting to flee the country to avoid prosecution. We have evidence of his crimes. The officers exchanged glances before turning their attention to David. Sir, we need you to come with us, one of them said, reaching for his arm. David pulled away, his eyes blazing with anger. You can't do this. I have rights. Sir, please cooperate, the officer insisted, his grip tightening on David's arm. As David was escorted away, I felt a wave of relief wash over me. We had done it. We had stopped him. But the fight wasn't over yet. We still needed to ensure that justice was served. Back at Max's apartment, we gathered around the kitchen table, exhausted but determined. We need to make sure the authorities have everything they need to prosecute him, I said, my mind racing. We've already given them the evidence, Max replied, his voice filled with hope. Now it's up to them. As the days passed, the investigation into David's activities gained momentum. The media continued to cover the story, and the pressure on him intensified. But the stress was taking its toll on all of us. One evening, as I was working on my latest manuscript, my phone buzzed with a call from Sarah. Lucy, I need to talk to you, she said, her voice trembling. What's wrong? I asked, my heart sinking. It's my mother. Sarah replied. She's refusing to cooperate with the investigation. She's trying to protect my father. I felt a surge of frustration. We can't let her do that. We need her testimony to strengthen our case. I know, Sarah said, her voice filled with determination. I'm going to talk to her. I need to make her understand that this is the right thing to do. B. 
Be careful, I warned. Your father won't go down without a fight. The next day, Sarah called me again. I talked to my mother, she said, her voice filled with a mix of hope and anxiety. She's agreed to cooperate with the investigation. She's willing to testify against my father. That's great news, I said, feeling a sense of relief. This could be the key to bringing him down. As the investigation continued, the pressure on David grew. He was eventually arrested and charged with multiple counts of fraud and embezzlement. The trial was set to begin, and we knew that our fight was nearing its climax. But the stress and tension were taking their toll on all of us. Max's job was still hanging by a thread, and the constant media scrutiny was overwhelming. One evening, as we sat in his apartment, Max turned to me, his eyes filled with exhaustion. Lucy, I don't know how much more of this I can take, he said, his voice breaking. It feels like we're fighting a losing battle. We're not losing, I said firmly, taking his hand. We've come too far to give up now. We're going to see this through to the end. As the trial date approached, the pressure continued to mount. But we knew that we had to stay strong. Everything was at stake, and we couldn't afford to falter now. The night before the trial, I sat alone in my apartment, my mind racing with thoughts of everything we had been through. I knew that the fight was far from over, but I also knew that we had the strength and determination to see it through. As I prepared for the final battle, I felt a sense of resolve wash over me. We had come too far to give up now. The fight for our family's honor was reaching its climax, and I was ready to face whatever challenges lay ahead. The courtroom was packed, the air thick with anticipation. The trial of David Turner had drawn significant media attention, and every seat was filled with reporters, spectators, and supporters. Max, Sarah, and I sat together, our nerves on edge as we waited for the proceedings to begin. David entered the courtroom, flanked by his high-powered legal team. He looked defiant, his eyes scanning the room with contempt. But I could see the cracks in his facade. The pressure was getting to him. The trial began, and the prosecution laid out their case with meticulous detail. They presented the evidence we had gathered, painting a damning picture of David's illegal activities. Witnesses testified, including Beth, who bravely took the stand against her husband. Her testimony was powerful, and I could see the toll it was taking on her. As the trial progressed, the tension in the courtroom grew. David's defense team fought back fiercely, trying to discredit the evidence and witnesses. But the truth was undeniable, and the weight of the evidence was overwhelming. Finally, it was time for the closing arguments. The prosecution delivered a compelling summary, urging the jury to hold David accountable for his crimes. The defense made their final plea, but it was clear that their case was crumbling. The jury deliberated for what felt like an eternity. We waited in the courthouse, the minutes stretching into hours. Max paced nervously, while Sarah and I tried to offer each other comfort. The uncertainty was unbearable. At last, the jury returned with their verdict. The courtroom fell silent as the foreman stood to read the decision. We find the defendant, David Turner, guilty on all counts. A collective gasp filled the room, followed by a wave of relief and triumph. David's face turned ashen, his defiance crumbling into shock and despair. He was led away in handcuffs, his reign of terror finally brought to an end. As we left the courthouse, the weight of the past few months lifted from our shoulders. We had fought a long and difficult battle, but we had emerged victorious. Max turned to me, his eyes filled with gratitude. We did it, Lucy. We really did it. I smiled, feeling a deep sense of pride and accomplishment. We couldn't have done it without each other. Sarah joined us, her eyes shining with tears of relief. Thank you, both of you. I know this hasn't been easy, but you never gave up. We're family, I said, pulling them both into a hug. And that's what family does. In the weeks that followed, the fallout from the trial continued to unfold. David's company was dismantled, and the authorities launched further investigations into his associates. The scandal had far-reaching consequences, but it also brought about a sense of justice and closure. Max's job was reinstated, 
and he received an outpouring of support from his colleagues and friends. His reputation was restored, and he emerged stronger and more resilient than ever. Sarah stood by his side, their bond deepened by the trials they had faced together. As for me, I decided it was time to reveal my true identity as an author. I held a press conference, announcing that I was the acclaimed novelist writing under a pseudonym. The response was overwhelmingly positive, and my career flourished as a result. One evening, as Max and I sat on the porch of our childhood home, reflecting on everything we had been through, I felt a profound sense of peace. The sun was setting, casting a warm glow over the landscape. We've come a long way, Max said, his voice filled with wonder. We have, I agreed, and we've grown stronger because of it. Max looked at me, his eyes filled with affection. I'm so proud of you, Lucy. You've shown incredible strength and courage. And I'm proud of you, I replied, squeezing his hand. We've faced so many challenges, but we've come out the other side, closer than ever. As the stars began to twinkle in the night sky, I felt a deep sense of gratitude for the journey we had taken. We had faced betrayal, humiliation, and intense conflict, but we had emerged victorious, our bond unbreakable. In the end, it wasn't just about defeating David Turner. It was about standing up for what was right, protecting our family, and finding the strength within ourselves to overcome adversity. And as we sat there side by side, I knew that we were ready to face whatever the future held together.